Hi guys, it's Rach. Today I am going to be giving you guys my first impressions and overall review of the Wayne Goss The Collection Makeup Brush Set Kit, whatever you would like to call it. There are eight brushes in total. I did buy the entire set. I've had a little bit of time to play around with them and I now I want to share my thoughts and opinion with you guys because I know a lot of you guys have been really curious about it. I'm sure a lot of you watch Wayne Goss, but if you don't, he's Goss Makeup Artist here on YouTube. He he is a fantastic makeup artist. His videos are very, very helpful. He's extremely knowledgeable and he's brought out his own range of brushes, which as soon as I heard he was doing that, I just, I knew I had to try them because he's just so knowledgeable and knows so much about brushes and has used so many of them that I figured his brushes would have to be fantastic because he would have the best of the best. You can tell that this is his project, his baby, and he really, really is interested in knowing what people think about them and he really wants to make them amazing so that other people think they're amazing too and I can just give you a little spoiler alert um, before we get into the in-depth review that I really do think they are fantastic brushes. So starting off like I said you do get eight brushes if you would like to purchase them for the UK and the rest of the world they are sold through lovemakeup.co.uk except for the US where you buy them through blush.com. From Love Makeup they are £140 plus shipping I believe my shipping was £12.50 so the total it was £152.50 which if you convert that to Australian dollars is just under $300 which is a lot but if you were to say that this was $300 and then you were to um, work out the price individually they work out at $37.50 each which and they're actually less than that because like I said it's less than $300 so if we were saying that they were say $37 each that is still a lot cheaper than certain MAC brushes um, and other high-end brands so they are expensive, they are a high quality product so that price does reflect that but they're not as expensive as you would think and they can be purchased individually. From blush.com I believe they're 210 US dollars. I would say in terms of packaging that blush.com did a much much better version of it and it was probably more a reflection of a high quality product. Blush had them in like a tube and they were wrapped in nice paper with a ribbon and things like that. It looked quite nice. I was kind of disappointed with the way that Love Makeup sent them out. They were just in a some a little bit of black paper and then just a cardboard box around them which isn't really reflective of a high quality luxury product but at the same time you aren't really paying for the packaging you want the product to be great so I can forgive that. In terms of the actual brush packaging as you can see they have a gloss black finish a gloss black ferrule and then they have the Wayne Goss written in silver writing and then the number and Wayne actually tweeted himself to me to say that the best tip is to apply a little bit of clear nail varnish over the top of these just so that that doesn't wear away because I'd say just like MAC and any of those other brushes if you do use it this color will wear away over time. They are very sleek, they're nice to feel in the hands, they're not too heavy but they also have enough weight in them to feel like you're actually holding a good quality product so overall I think that they do look very very nice, very stylish, very swish I would say. Looking at the actual brushes themselves overall I can say that they are incredibly incredible incredibly soft. I've been asked to compare and they definitely are way softer than any of my other sort of Sigma brushes, my Real Techniques, my MAC brushes, so much softer than those. Um, compared to my Hakuhodu brushes I would say that they are very similar if not slightly softer. Slightly softer than my Hakuhodu ones so if you've felt those before um, you are looking at definitely a similar quality if not slightly, ever so slightly um, softer and fluffier. So really really nice brushes, definitely um, softer than any of my other more expensive brushes. Looking at the individual brushes we have this brush here which is number one. I am hesitant to call any of these brushes a particular name like a foundation brush or an eye brush or things like that because most of them are all extremely extremely um, multi-use like the only complaint I would have about the brushes is that I almost want more of them because I find that I need to use the brush for like 10 different jobs on my face so which means I would have to clean it constantly in one makeup application but this is probably the one brush out of all of them where I would almost say that it's solely foundation or um, blending in say concealer. This is a really nice quite soft duo fiber it's different to your normal duo fiber in that the um, bristles on the or the hairs on the bottom are white as well as the ones on the top and the longer bristles are quite dense 
say in comparison if we're looking at something like this this is my real technique stippling brush you can see that these this, these are quite sparse whereas this is quite dense. Comparing in size, well there we are, you can see that when compared to the Real Technique stippling brush, if I also compare it to say the Sigma, this is the flat angled Kabuki F88, it is quite a bit smaller. But I think that that's great for really detailed, more precision work. What I could say about the entire collection is that it's definitely catered to more detailed, more precision um, makeup application. This, you can still apply foundation all over your face, however if you're used to using a really big brush then you may feel like you have to spend a little bit of longer time using this one because it does have a smaller surface area. What I like about this one is that I found that I could use it both in sweeping motions and in buffing motions. Certain foundations for me I find work better if I like wipe them on as opposed to buffing them in because when I buff them in they make all the little baby hairs or peach fuzz on your face kind of stick up a little bit. I hope somebody out there knows what I'm talking about and I'm not just like making this up but for me I find certain foundations do that and when I'm using those foundations I can use this brush, use it in swiping motions and it won't leave a streak or lines the same way like a flat um, paddle brush would so I really like it for that. It also means that you can kind of jump between strokes and buffing really simple because you're doing it all with the one brush and because of the I guess the softness of the hairs those there's no streaking if that makes sense so I really like it for that. I like the fact that the shape of it means that you can really get into the size of your nose for underneath your eye. I did use it briefly to apply a little bit of cream contour. I used it with my Chanel um, Bronze Universal. I did like it for that as well. You could potentially use this also for cream blush but for me I found that I'm mainly using it for foundation and concealer. The next brush that we have here is brush number two. This is just, I could just run my hands on it all day. So soft. This is probably the most universal brush for me. I use this for powder, both on my face, T-zone, underneath the eyes. I use this for blush. I use this for contour. I can use this for bronzer. Um, it is just, I just, I find that I'm using it highlight as well. I'm using it for every sort of face application bar, say, my foundation. So I really, really love this brush and I wish I had more of them. It works really, really well for contouring because it's just that right size. It is tapered at the end, so it means that you can sort of apply product and then buff it out with the same, same brush. I would say that if you want like a really soft, really kind of sweeping bronze application where you basically are warming up the entire face, then you might find this sort of a little bit more difficult to use than say your usual slightly larger powder brush because you can splay the bristles out but it still is a smaller surface area than say this is the, um, what is this, the Real Techniques Multitask brush. You can see sort of the difference in size there hopefully. Um, so it is a smaller brush. It's kind of similar, I guess, in size. This is the Real Techniques Contour Brush. So if I put them next to each other, you can see um, the size comparison there. Hopefully that will help you guys out. But overall, I think this is a fantastic brush. Um, I have been using it non-stop since I got it. I have washed these just this morning because I want to make them semi-clean for you guys. But a really, really great brush. Now speaking of washing, I didn't notice any shedding at all so far of these brushes which I think is fantastic because some brushes will shed straight away or shed when you do your first wash. I didn't find anything like that. The next brush we have here is the first of the eye brushes um, and this is number three. Again, I wouldn't necessarily call this just an eye brush. I've liked this for powdering under the eyes. I also like this for doing sort of a really specific highlight really well along the tops of my cheekbones. You can also use this for blending out concealer. While these are real hair brushes, you can use cream products and I have used cream products with them. The one thing I would say is because they are real hair, they do tend to um, grab onto the cream product and you do need to wash them more regularly than you do with, say, synthetic brushes, but that's fairly standard. But you can use all of these brushes with liquid products that have tried it. But I love this for um, powder under the eyes. You can also do contouring down the nose, which I've done this for. But mainly for the eyes, I think that this is a great brush for applying color all over the lid. If I wanna just go for like a bronzy look, sometimes I'll just use bronzer just all over my lid, buff it into the crease, and then wear some mascara. This one is really great for that. So you can use the sides of the brush, you can use the tip of the brush. This is tapered, so even though it does seem quite large, like I compare it to, this is the MAC 224 brush. So you can see it's a similar size to that. The bristles are a little bit longer, but similar in, I guess, 
diameter. I find that I can use this and I can be a little bit more precise if I just use a light pressure or I can really really buff it out if I press a little bit harder and the bristles are just so soft that while it doesn't necessarily make you an instant makeup artist overnight, I do think that it makes applying your eye products or your eyeshadows just that little bit easier. The next one we have here is brush number four, which if you want to compare, it's a similar shape to brush number three. It's just about, oh, I don't know, two thirds of the size, half of the size of that one. So this one would do a similar job if you have smaller eyes. This is probably your most versatile um, eye brush. Use it to apply color on the lid, use it to apply color in the crease. You can use it to blend out as well. Again, really tapered at the end there so you can get like a really nice defined crease if you would like and then blend out the color as well. So I really, really love this duo of brushes. Very, very soft and I can basically just use these and not use really any other brushes to apply my shadow. Next we have brush number five which is a long sort of skinny brush. I'm trying to think if I've got anything to compare it to and I really don't. This is the Sigma Blending E36. This is part of that performance eyes kit. So you can see that it's quite small similar. This is less fluffy. It's fuller all the way along, quite dense and it has a slight taper to it but not um, as I guess pronounced as the other brushes that I've shown previously. Now again I think this one's supposed to be for eye work but my first thing that I ever used this for was precision concealing. So I took a little bit of this with my MAC, I think it was like my studio finish concealer, and would apply it on my blemishes. And what I liked was that it was small enough that I could apply it in a concentrated area, but at the same time it's soft and fluffy so I was able to blend out with the same brush, which I thought was really, really handy. I also found that I could use it to apply my highlighting concealer and then I could come back in with, say, the foundation brush and just blend that out. So I really, really like this brush for other things outside of the eye, but this one works really well. I like it to apply my inner corner highlight, also to run shadow along the lower lash line if I want it to be sort of really smoked down. This works well over, say, using like a really dense pointed pencil brush. This is just that little bit softer so you can really sort of smoke it out under the eye. You can also use this, I found, for doing a cut crease and I liked it for that. You can really sort of get it into the crease of your eye. So that's a really great brush. Number six is an interesting brush. When you look at it front on, it looks almost like it's a flat shader brush, but then when you turn it to use the side, it's fluffier than a shader brush, but then thinner than your average sort of domed blending brush. So it's a really interesting shape. I believe this one is supposed to be used for blending and so that's what I've been using it for. I keep it clean and just use it to blend out my eyeshadow. It works really, really well for that because you can kind of use it on its side and be a little bit more precise with your blending or turn it on, um, I guess, vertical and you can really sort of blow out your um, eyeshadow to get that really kind of soft look. It isn't too big, it isn't too small, at least for my eyes. It may seem a little bit larger for those of you who have um, smaller eyes, smaller features, but um, I really quite like this brush. Again, it's incredibly soft. You can use it to sweep eyeshadow across the lid as well. I've done it that. I also have used it for applying concealer under the eye, and I really, really liked it for that. I could kind of sweep it across and use padding motions, as well as powder. You could use powder as well. You can use it on any part of your face. Really, all these brushes are super duper multi-purpose. That's why I'm glad that they're just numbered, rather than having a specific use attached to them, because really, you can use it for whatever you want. This is the Sigma E25 blending brush if you just want to sort of see what they look like in comparison. This, the Wayne Goss one is quite a bit thinner than the Sigma and of course it's like a thousand times softer than the Sigma one as well. Second last brush here we have brush number seven. This brush I've used for multiple uses. The first thing I used it for was my lips and I really like this to apply hard to apply lip products and for me hard to apply lip products are something like the OCC Lip Tars or the Lime Crime Velveteens. These are extremely pigmented but extremely runny and I find that any products like that can be really hard to get a really crisp line along your lips and this just works so well. It's just it's really really dense and really really hard without being scratchy. So I can go along the edge of my lip, fill my whole lip in with this and it just works really really well. I've also used this in my brows, that worked quite nicely as well, it has a nice thin tip so you can get the really like hair strokes within your brows. It's an interesting brush and I actually really really like it because I don't have a brush 
quite like this. I have ones that are similar shape, but they're thicker or they're fluffier. It's not quite as dense, and I just I really do like it for applying lip products. And then finally, last but not least, is brush number eight. This is the tiniest brush that I own, mm. and I am in love with this brush for applying um, using black shadow to apply it across your upper lid line to create liner. This is just the perfect size to really push it, not only just like on your lid near your lash line, like right into your lashes. It's also really great to run gel liner along your lower lash line. I'll just put gel eyeliner on one side of the brush and just pat it along my waterline. It works really, really well for that. Um, you could also sort of draw it right into your lashes on your lower lash line. It's just really, really great for putting any product in like a really straight, really thin line. It's quite dense again, it's quite hard, but it's not scratchy, which I love because I have plenty of brushes that can be like little dense compact brushes, but they can be really quite scratchy. So I'm really impressed with the fact that these don't feel like they're scratching out my eyeball. So they are all eight brushes. That's just the way that I've used them. I will put a link in the description box of a playlist where um, Wayne actually goes through and talks about each brush individually. They're just short videos, but it goes through basically every way that you could possibly use these brushes which I think will be really helpful if you maybe don't want to buy the entire collection but you are interested in a couple of brushes. Overall I think that they're really high quality. I do think that they are worth the price while I would love them to be a little bit cheaper because well we all we all want everything to be cost nothing in the world. That's just the way we are. I don't feel like I was ripped off if that makes sense. I would say if there was one thing that I would change about the collection it would be to add one more brush and it would be to find a larger brush maybe something similar to this but just in a larger size and I know why it wouldn't be included because it would probably be quite expensive but maybe it'll be one of the brushes that he brings out individually I know that he's working on new brushes overall I think these brushes are fantastic would I recommend them yes am I glad that I purchased them yes do I think that you must have these brushes to be able to apply your makeup well, no. There are other fantastic brushes out there that are cheaper that will still apply your makeup nicely and you could go your whole life without using these brushes. Who these brushes would be best for is somebody who applies makeup all the time and who really enjoys the experience of applying makeup. These brushes really enhance the overall ex experience of applying makeup. It makes it easier and softer and more enjoyable if that makes sense and they're just, they are a luxury product and maybe you can't afford to buy all of them but maybe there's one specific or two specific that would be great for you. If you have a smaller face and really like to apply foundation maybe in a more detailed way, if you're more precision with your foundation application, if you have really good skin and maybe only apply foundation to certain areas of your face, this brush would be perfect for you. If you are somebody who spends a lot of time on your base, so you are like me and really enjoy the foundation, the concealer, the powder, the bronzer, the highlighter, the contour, the blush, this brush would be for you because you can use it for so many different things and it just feels so nice on your face. If you're somebody who really, really likes to do eye looks and different eye looks and really, really smoke out your eye look, these two brushes, the number three and the four, would be perfect for you because they'll just make applying eyeshadow so much nicer and so much easier. Like I mentioned, if you have hooded eyes or you really like pushing eyeliner right into your lashes, this brush number eight will make your life so much easier and you will love it. And then um, this other brush, the number seven, love it for lips. If you struggle to find a nice lip liner brush and none of them seem to work for you, they're either too long or too skinny or too short or just not the right shape, then this one would be great to try because I think you'll really, really like it. But overall, great brushes. If you can afford them, I definitely think that they are worth it. And well done, Wayne. Congratulations. I think you did a fantastic job. And I've been really, really enjoying using these brushes. So that's it for my review. I probably went on longer than I wanted to, but hopefully I covered everything. For whatever I missed, please ask me questions in the comments below. I will answer them the best that I can. I will also include links in the description box as to where you can buy the products, for both for the UK and worldwide, as well as the US, and prices and any other information that I can shove into that description box. So definitely check that out. As far as I'm aware, I do believe that the brushes are on... Um, back order or out of stock at the moment on both websites but they both have waiting lists so I would recommend jumping onto the waiting list now so when they are back in stock you can check them out and other than that I'm gonna go I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day and I will see you all next time bye